What's going on all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions. And today I get to talk about five graphic novel hidden gems. And this is for the month of, what month are we in? August? August of 2022. Let's do it. And welcome back everybody. This here is one of my favorite segments that I get to do every month. And it's a segment that I not only get to share five graphic novel hidden gems, but you all do as well. So if you're new to the channel or if you've never seen this segment, this is where I talk about five books that not a lot of people talk about. I don't see get a lot of recognition or love. Some of these you may have seen um, or read yourself and you may love or you may not. But anyway, if you have any recommendations, leave them down below. I love looking at people's lists and I've gotten so many good reads because of you all over the last few years. So before going any further, please smash that like button, subscribe, ring that bell for notification. All of that does help with our YouTube algorithm. And since the YouTube algorithm is kind of whack, it really does help out a ton. And a big thank you to our patrons for making videos like this possible. Could not be doing videos like this without you all. The information to our Patreon is in the description of the video. Now, let's get this month started. Kicking off this list of graphic novels for the month is Gemini by Jay Farber and John Somariva. This is published by Image Comics, and it's one that is all and done, meaning that there are no more volumes after this one. Everything you need to read is in here. So Jay Farber is a, is a writer that has been around in comics for a long time. He's written for DC, he's written for Marvel, and he's written a lot of independent books, including, I think, one that I had in my Hidden Gems last month, the Elsewhere series. But this one is pretty unique. This has been described as the Manchurian Candidate meets Spider-Man, and I can see why. So it's, it's all about the superhero named Gemini, and Gemini is being controlled by this secret organization. And they activate him and deactivate him. Now the twist here is that Gemini has no idea who his secret identity is, who the guy that is Gemini is, and the secret identity, Dan Johnson, also has no idea that he's a superhero named Gemini. Dan is just a guy that has a normal job, and Gemini is your stereotypical quippy superhero, if you will. So neither one of these identities know about each other. So that's a pretty interesting twist, right? That like you wake up with a sore arm, you're like, wait a minute, what happened? Now one could say this is all set in the world of Dynamo 5 and Noble Causes, which are other books written by Jay Farber, but you don't need to have read those to enjoy this particular book. But uh, Dynamo 5 does make an appearance in this particular graphic novel. I think the rating for this one would have to be teenagers just because of the violence that is in here. And there are <laughs> there is a lot of violence. This book has plenty of action. There's tons of fighting in here. The cast of characters remained interesting throughout the entire book. And the artwork by Soma Riva is awesome. I really like it. It's very cartoony. And so the violence in here, the over the top violence when people's heads blow up, just looks so ridiculously fun, if that makes sense. It's Got a nice mix of Joe Madreira, Humberto Ramos, Jeffrey Scott Campbell, uh, just to name a few of the artists that he draws heavy inspiration from. So one could say anime inspired, of course. So absolutely recommending this one. This one is a lot of fun. The book does not take itself seriously. And sometimes you need a break from the norm and just have fun with comics. And that's why I'm kicking off the list with Gemini. Seasons. Now, this is Volume 1, Spring, by Nandor Schaefer and Anthony Gonzalez Clark. This is a self-published book. And as a matter of fact, I actually had Nandor on the show a couple of years ago, and he was kind enough to send me the book. I read it, and just like most books I read, I've set aside, and then I'm reminded of why I enjoyed it. So, this is definitely for older teens. It is a really interesting book, and one, honestly, that you can read for free. There's a digital version, and I'll put a link to the website in the description of the video where you can read some of the chapters for free. Uh, but hey, this is a physical media channel, so you can purchase this and own a physical copy. It's available through Diamond, meaning that you can get it from our sponsors, or you can uh, head over to Amazon. 
but this book was so unique and the art is what really stood out to me. So we have this character named Fletcher, Fletcher Hart uh, Iams, and it starts with his journey in life. He's an everyday guy. He's waking up. He's going to work. He has a crush on this girl at work named Kathleen. Everything seems pretty normal until something makes him snap. And that something is he's finally able to tell this girl, Kathleen, how he feels about her. However, when he's at a party, he sees her with another guy and he just runs away from the party. And the story went away that I wasn't expecting it to go. Pretty much what ends up happening, he lets these emotions out as a physical being, if you will. It's almost like a shadow version of himself. All the self-loathing, all the doubt, all the hatred that you have for others comes out in this shadow version of himself. And he recognizes it, and they have a fight. And he's able to fight with these balls made of light, if you will, like an essence of light. That's how he's able to fight this shadow creature of himself. Then he realizes that there are other shadow people, and they're all coming for him, and he can hear all the shadow people's thoughts. It got a little bit confusing at first because I thought he was dead, because he, people couldn't see him, he could put his hand through things, but then he's able to rematerialize his body. So it's an interesting take on emotions and what they can do to us, and the negativity that you give yourself. I mean, there's no bigger critic than yourself, no matter what it is that you do. So I thought that was a really cool twist on it, giving it a personification, if you will, uh, something to actually hit and fight against. And the story does end with a cliffhanger. Um, so there was a Kickstarter for Volume 2. I believe that one came out last year. And that you could still get through his website. Again, I'll leave the link in the description of the video. But absolutely recommending this one. This is a hardcover. That is the only format that it's available in. I thought it was a beautiful book. And the artwork, my goodness, Clark's artwork is great. He, it's all in black and white, so if that's not for you, why? They're, you're missing out on so many good stories. But I get it. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But his art really works great. Those shadow creatures look really creepy. I'd love to see him do some kind of horror story. But absolutely recommending Seasons Volume 1. Knights of the Golden Sun by Mark London and Mauricio Villarreal. This is published by Mad Cave Studios. And I've had Mark on the show before. We talked about his writings. Uh, mainly he was promoting the latest Battle Cat volume. And this is the other book that he was writing that completely sold out in single issues. I remember when a lot of you all uh, were telling me about this, but I have to give a shout out to Darkstar916 for sending me a copy of this book. And I remember really enjoying it, but I think what ended up happening it is I put it away and <laughs> I forgot about it until this particular week when I was looking for books to put on the segment. So this one is for older teens. It is all based on the Bible, but it takes a lot of liberties and it kind of retcons a lot of stories. I guess if you can retcon stories in the Bible, but it does its own thing is what I'm trying to say. During this particular time between the Old Testament and New Testament, God has kind of left providence, the, if you will, heaven. And now the angels are having to fend for themselves and Lufus, Lucifer, Uncanny Omar Talk Pretty one day, Lucifer, what the heck, the morning star, feels like since he was the first angel, he should have been left providence. So why wasn't he called upon? So there's this huge war going on between angels and the fallen, and God is gone. Like, the angels can't hear him. But we also have humanity represented there in the way of David. David shows up. Now, expect to see characters in here from the Bible, like Michael and Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, and of course, Lucifer. And you also have Azrael, who is leading the army of the fallen, and they're kidnapping angels. So there's this huge war that is breaking out. Humanity is caught in the middle. Mark has a really good sense of world building. He gives each character their own time so that readers can get accustomed to these characters and grow a bond with these characters. He did the same thing with Battle Cats, and this, I think, is done a little bit better. 
There are a lot of twists and turns in here. So even if you're a Bible scholar, or if you've just read the Old Testament or New Testament, or you've never opened the Bible, I think anybody could enjoy this particular story. The artwork here by Villarreal is very unique for its time because it looks like something that came out of the late 90s in the way that the color schemes look. Almost like a Photoshop color, computer generated colors. But it really works when talking about angels and demons. I thought it was a really nice touch. And the uniqueness to the way that the demons look, or really, I'm sorry, the fallen, I thought really stood out above other stories that I've read or what you've come to expect when it comes to you know, Lucifer or Asriel. But this is volume one. There's a second volume that came out last year. So it is an ongoing series. I'm not sure how much longer he's going to go. But this is a series that I don't hear a lot of people talk about. I know it was highly praised when it was coming out in single issues. So much so that you couldn't find a freaking copy. So get the trade. Epic Kill by Rafael Ienko. Published by Image Comics. Now with a name like Epic Kill... What do you expect to see when you open up the book? So this one is for older teens. It's almost got mature ratings just because of the violence and language in here. So we meet this character of Song. She's an 18 year old girl that wakes up not knowing a lot of her past, not knowing what is going on. But she does have one thing that she remembers and that's how to be a badass assassin. She's able to kill people with her bare hands and she does it through a series of flashbacks and also in a dreamlike state where she sees demons, she sees werewolves that are ninjas. And then when she wakes up in the real world, she has killed people or single-handedly taken out people with a bunch of guns. Now, her memories start coming back. And at the end of the first issue, she finds out who her next target is. And that is the President of the United States. So it's an interesting story. Like I said, she wakes up not knowing a lot of memories. She's in a home full of other girls. They don't seem to be assassins. It just seems like a home for people that have mental issues. But she escapes the home and now she's on this journey. And later on you get to find out what happened to her in the past. You, you see that it is a revenge plot story. Now, this is definitely a love letter to movies like uh, Kill Bill, or even just a bunch of Hong Kong action movies, The Matrix, Elektra, you know, you'll see in there when you see some of the pages, and even The Long Kiss Goodnight, if you will. But my favorite thing I have to say about this one is that Yenko is the writer. He's the penciler, he's the inker, he's the colorist, and he's the letterer. He did everything himself except for edit the book. That is a freaking task. And it's so amazing to see this writer artist progress with each issue. Like you could tell in the first few issues that the characters and the way that he has his poses are very stiff. Then he feels a lot more comfortable with the characters by the time you get to issue number five. It's a lot more fluid the way that the fighting sequences flow. Uh, the panel layouts get a lot better. That's one of my favorite things about graphic novels is that you can see the progression or evolution of a writer and artist. So really awesome. It ends with a definite ending, but apparently he went on to do a second story arc. So this collects the first five issues. I believe there's a total of 10 issues. But another one that I don't hear enough people talk about, it's violent as hell, so if you're not um, comfortable with violence, then maybe stay away from this one. But if you love violence over the top, this one's a lot of fun. The Book Tour by Andy Watson, published by Top Shelf Productions. This is one that I picked up at the beginning of the year, and I ended up reading it just last month. And I immediately set it aside and thought, okay, I'm adding this one to the hidden gems. This was too good not to talk about. Now, some people may be <sighs> weary of this one just because it looks like a webcomic or it looks like a comic strip that you would see in a Sunday newspaper, but you're gonna be missing out on a really powerful, confusing, dark humor type of story. Um, this one is for teens and up. Now, we are introduced to the character of G.H. Fretwell, who is a British author. He had just published a book called Without a K. It's a crime novel, and he is going on a book tour. He leaves his wife and kid at home, 
and things just keep happening to him that you're like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? So in this book tour, he goes from bookstore to bookstore. And the very first thing that happens to him is he gets his suitcase stolen. His suitcase is full of books that he was going to sign at the bookstore. He reports it to the police station. Police station is like, really? You're missing a briefcase full of books? Sorry, we got a bigger thing going on. So when he goes to these bookstores, there's nobody waiting for him. It's kind of sad to see him waiting for people to come and buy his book or to get a signature. He blames the rain or it could be just because it didn't get promoted enough. So he talks to his publisher. Now, in one of these bookstores, he meets a lady named, I believe her name was Rebecca. It was his wife's name. She goes missing. And apparently there's a serial killer going around in the city that he's in. The police are trying to find who it is. They keep questioning him. So you can probably see where this is going. And just on the way that he is and his manners, he's very laid back. He doesn't stand up for himself. So there's going to be a lot of times that you're looking at the book going, why the hell aren't you telling him you have an alibi? Why aren't you telling these detectives that you have nothing to do with this crime? Because he was the last person to have seen this lady named Rebecca at the bookstore. So a lot of misunderstandings, a lot of mishaps. And then you start asking yourself, is any of this real? Or am I really reading about this character that he wrote about in his book? And I love that. Um, the ending is a little bit anticlimactic, but that's okay because I think it's the journey that takes us there that's a lot of fun. It's one that I could not put down. I remember having to take my kids to school the next day, and I stayed up till 2 o'clock in the morning finishing this from cover to cover. 100% recommended if you're a fan of independent comics or even just a little bit of dark humor with some life lesson elements thrown in there. This is for you. Now, you can find these books at our sponsors. If you live in Europe and are interested in buying and pre-ordering Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC books within the EU, flat shipping rates of 11 euro and 90 cents for all EU countries, great customer service with sturdy packaging and emails answered within 24 hours. They also offer a superb selection of new titles and out of print books. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. For a limited time, you can use the code near mint condition, all one word, at checkout and get a 10 euros voucher for your first order over 40 euros. Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in europe Ting. cheapgraphicnovels.com your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50 percent off cover price they have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service check out their bargain deals for up to 90 percent off cover price and don't forget that cgn also takes pre-orders that way you don't miss out on the hottest releases and they are currently running a special promotion for you minties if you're a first-time customer after receiving your order confirmation email Reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the U.S. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was it. That was the five hidden gems for the month of August of 2022. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, what you thought about them, if you have any suggestions for me to check out. I would love to know your opinions, uh, what you think are hidden gems. And if you've recommended me some, in this, especially in this past year, believe me, I have a list where I keep all the books, all the recommendations that I do eventually buy and I do read. Um, and I know you folks always send me books too, so thank you all for that. Everyone, please stay healthy and safe. Much love. <music>